we're getting to the end stage of degeneracy, right? Uh, uh, you, you can have sex with whomever you want, but you don't find this group of people sexually attractive for whatever fucking reason that you have, yeah, some, some personal thing that you have. You don't find this group uh, sexually attractive and therefore you're bad, and so you must have sex with them. That's fucking crazy, right? That, that is basically saying that your personal sexual preferences, whatsoever they may be, they are open to the, the moral disapproval of others. What the fuck? Okay? I mean, it, it wasn't the whole notion of sexual liberation to precisely go against this idea that other people would have influence on your sexual preferences? I mean, uh, which is it then? Okay? That you can have sex with whomever you want, or you can not have sex with whomever you want. You ha can only have sex with the people that uh, some other group approves of. What the fuck? I talk about the deregulation of the sexual marketplace all the time, and I say that. You know, there, there are no limits to people's sexual encounters. You can have sex with anybody, anybody at all, in any combination. Men, women, you know, a pair, a trio, four, five, an orgy. You can have sex any way you want with whomever you want, so long as three conditions are met. Number one, that you fancy one another. Number two, that you are both on the same side of the age of consent. And number three, that there is consent both at the time of the sexual encounter and, crucially, into the future. Now those three conditions, those three limitations, the last barriers of, of uh, you know, the, the sexual marketplace, right? I want to talk about the first two. Uh, the consent, I'm going to actually talk about it in a video, you know, the next video that I put out. But insofar as those first two conditions, i.e. that uh, you f actually fancy the person you have sex with, and both people are on the same side of the age of consent, well, we got to talk about them because right now there is a concerted effort to break through both of those barriers insofar as sexual relations are concerned. Now, the first of those two issues is that you fancy the person. I mean, you gotta actually like the person, or let me phrase that, not necessarily like them, because we all know about, you know, hate fucking. That's, that's a, 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 a little treat in and of itself, right? Fucking somebody that you really despise, yeah. Uh, desire, sexual desire for somebody, right? You have to have that. The, the people participating in the sexual encounter, be they two or a thousand, they actually want, they, they actually have to want to fuck one another, right? But as of late, you've noticed that there's been this concerted effort for people to have sex with people that they do not find sexually attractive. Have you noticed? Yeah, there's a lot of this shit going on that, you know, if you don't find uh, trans women sexually attractive, then you're transphobic or some shit like that, you know? I mean, I look at uh, trans women, right? Uh, first of all, I don't find them sexually uh, attractive because I recognize that they are, uh, you know, they have mental problems, severe mental problems. And so I, I just inherently do not find people with severe mental problems sexually attractive. And so for me, trans women, I, I feel sorry for them and I wish that they would get treatment, but by the same token that I do not find schizophrenic women sexually attractive, I don't find trans women sexually attractive. I feel sorry for them. I wish them the best and I wish that they would get treatment, but wanting to fuck them? Not really, you know? I mean, call me crazy, you know? But that's my thing. I do not want to fuck crazy people or people with severe mental disorders. But the other thing is, of course, that I, even if they weren't crazy, I look at them and I don't find them sexually attractive because they're transsexual. Hmm? I mean, the fact of the matter is, I don't find all women sexually attractive either, right? There are lots of women, uh, I would argue the majority of women, that I do not find sexually attractive. Uh, the obvious example is that, you know, women in their 70s. Sorry, ladies, but I'm just not sexually attracted to you, right? Uh, by the same token, I look at a transsexual woman and I am not sexually attracted to them. But, 
There has been a concerted effort as of late to label such quote-unquote discrimination, because it is discrimination after all, right? You are discriminating against a group of people that you do not find sexually attractive for whatever reason. There is this effort to label this natural discrimination as transphobic. And there is the onus on the person, on the guy, on you, to actually find a transsexual woman sexually attractive. Yeah. And if you don't want to fuck them, then you're transphobic, you're bad, you're evil. Huh? Something else is going on insofar as races are concerned, yeah? I mean, there are a lot of people of different races, be they of African descent, of East Asian descent, of European descent, of whatever descent, who do not find people of other descendancies sexually interesting or sexually attractive. It's perfectly normal, okay? Just as there are a lot of guys who do not find short women attractive or who do not find tall women attractive. I mean, you, you see, but there is this notion that if you do not find people, say you're European and you do not find somebody of African descent sexually attractive, then you're racist, yeah? There is a concerted effort in this regard to force people to find that which they do not find sexually attractive to want to have sex with them, or they must. If they don't, then they're bad people. I mean, if you think about it, this is we're, we're getting to the end stage of degeneracy, right? Uh, uh, you, you can have sex with whomever you want, but you don't find this group of people sexually attractive for whatever fucking reason that you have, yeah, some, some personal thing that you have. You don't find this group uh, sexually attractive, and therefore you're bad, and so you must have sex with them. That's fucking crazy, right? That is basically saying that your personal sexual preferences, whatsoever they may be, they are open to the, the moral disapproval of others. What the fuck? Okay? I mean, it wasn't the whole notion of sexual liberation to precisely go against this idea that other people would have influence on your sexual preferences? I mean, uh, which is it then? Okay? that you can have sex with whomever you want, or you can not have sex with whomever you want. You ha can only have sex with the people that uh, some other group approves of. What the fuck? Yeah, well, that's the crazy times we're living in, motherfucker. You know, up is down, down is up, left is right, right is left. Yeah, yeah crazy ass shit. But you see my point. See, a, a personal discernment, personal discrimination as to whom you find sexually attractive is now being policed. This last barrier of the three that I mentioned, yeah, this barrier is being uh, attacked, virulently attacked. And you who do not find a trans woman attractive, you who do not find, say, a homosexuality attractive, you who do not find, say, African Americans or European Americans or Asian Americans or, or whatever country you're at, if you don't find them attractive, then you're racist somehow, yeah? This is kind of crazy. It, it, it's basically trying to take away from people their preferences and impose on them preferences, or more to the point, make it so that they must have sex with anyone. Huh? That's kind of fucking weird if you ask me. But the weirder one is the second one the issue of the age of consent. Yeah, at this time, what's going on is that, see, uh, people can have sex on either side of the age in, of consent, but they can't cross it. Uh, let me explain. For instance, a, a say, 15-year-old girl who has sex with a 16-year-old boy, her boyfriend from high school, yeah? That's perfectly acceptable. Uh, the 16-year-old the boy is not going to get into any kind of trouble, yeah? Because they're on the same side of the age of consent. Let's, for the sake of argument, say that the age of consent is 18, just for the sake of this video, right? So the 15-year-old girl has sex with a 16-year-old boy. The 16-year-old boy is not going to be accused of statu statutory rape or any shit like that, right? On the flip side, you have, say, an 18-year-old girl having sex with a 22-year-old guy and everything's going to be copacetic because, because they are both on the same side of the age of consent. Above the age of 18, both participants can have as much sex as they want. Below the age of 18, both participants can have as much sex as they want. Now, in those relatively few cases where one is on, the, on one side of the age of consent and the other is on the other, but the difference is very sh small, 
For instance, a 17-year-old girl in high school having sex with an 18-year-old boy who is also in high school, most people recognize that this kind of Romeo and Juliet type situation is acceptable because the age difference is so small and the fact that they are both in the same social milieu excuses it. Okay? And so, this is what I'm talking about. You know, what I'm talking about is like, for instance, a girl who's, say, 15 having sex with a guy who's, say, 30. Everybody freaks out, and justifiably so. Because? Because there's the notion that the 30-year-old man is a full-grown adult, whereas the 15-year-old girl that he's sleeping with is still in many ways a child, and still in many ways does not have the discernment, the judgment, to realize if what she's doing is good or bad, smart or stupid. You see what I mean? So that's the state of the paradigm at this time. And we're all pretty much in agreement that this uh, issue of the age of consent is an important thing, that we should not allow the line of the age of consent to be broken, right? But there are actually a lot of people who are pushing to break down this barrier, and in particular, among homosexuals. A lot of people in the gay community are subtly, and sometimes not so subtly, pushing to have this uh, restriction on the age of cons consent rescinded. And we can see it in their reaction to these boys who are dressed in drag and who parade themselves in front of the homosexual community. I'm talking about um, Lactatia, uh, I think is the name of one of them. Lactatia, what a horrifying name, right? Lactatia is one, and uh, Desmond is amazing is another. They are basically catamites, and they are being paraded around as if it's perfectly normal, a perfectly good thing, you know, gay rights and all that, you know, and drag and all that. No, it's horrifying because they are small boys. The, these children, because that's what they are, children, these boys, I do believe they're something like uh, 10 or 11 years old, something like that. And the fact that they are being paraded around in drag and being exposed to a, a clearly adult environment that they have no business uh, of being exposed to and in point of fact should be uh, uh, protected from uh, not because the environment is necessarily degenerate although I personally do believe it is degenerate no it's they should be protected from this environment because it is an adult environment and these are children and yet a lot of people in the gay community seem to be saying tacitly that young boys not only should be exposed to this homosexual community, this homosexual environment, but that they should participate in it. Because th there is that inherent tacit understanding that it's okay for Lactatia and Desmond is amazing to be participating in drag shows. And potentially it's okay for them to participate in gay sex with adults, which I find disgusting, but that's what's going on. Yeah? In other words, there is a concerted effort to break down this bright dividing line of the age of consent. And it's happening first in the homosexual community, but it's also happening among pedoph pedophiles. Uh, pedophiles, acknowledged pedophiles, uh, people who have been diagnosed as pedophiles are increasingly you know, making their voices heard, which is a polite way of saying that they are lobbying to uh, bring acceptance to their condition. They are lobbying and, and trying to say that it's perfectly normal for an adult to have sex with a child. Uh, it, this, this push has been going on for a few years and it's becoming even more prevalent because what's happening is that a lot of transsexual women uh, individuals who were formerly and, and born genetically male who have transitioned to being female, mm -hmm. they are uh, encouraging this. They are encouraging um, sexual relationships between adults and children, which I for one find despicable and dis disgusting because children do not have the discernment to know what's what. But they are propagating this lobbying effort in the mainstream media. We see it, we've seen articles in mainstream news websites, we've seen uh, uh, videos and, and, and what have you pieces on television almost glorifying this. 
which I find deeply, deeply troubling. You know, you go through history and uh, almost every successful empire, when it was in its decadent phase, it had catamites running around all over the goddamn place. Yeah, simple as that. Uh, you go to the Roman Empire, the Egyptian Empire, yeah, every fucking empire, the French Empire, right? Uh, the first French Empire. They did have catamites running around. They were passed around like party favors for crying out loud. Yeah? And it goes to this whole issue of Jeffrey Epstein and what he was doing. Yeah? Jeffrey Epstein, what was, what was he? He was a pedophile, a rich pedophile, who, uh, a pedophile pimp, if you, if you look into the, the whole situation of the Epstein character, right? And this pedophile pimp would pimp out these underage girls to rich men and rich women um, to have sex with these girls, right? Uh, to break down this limitation, this, this second limitation that I discussed, yeah? And uh, w what does this entail, you know, th this breakdown? What does it entail, not on a moral uh, level to these individuals, not on the psychological level to these poor victims of such abuse, but what does it mean to our wider culture, our incredible civilization? What does it represent, this breakdown of these last two limitations? It means that we've passed from the decadent stage of our civilizational arc to the degenerate stage of our civilizational arc. I mean, we're two minutes to midnight in so far as the end of our civilization, if this is what's going on. Yeah. Because a healthy civilization, a healthy culture, does not have these problems. Uh -uh. It does not have a problem whereby children are being targeted for sexual abuse. And there are justifications and lobbying efforts to allow such sexual abuse. And such sexual abuse is being permitted uh, tacitly, like for instance in the Epstein case. Yeah? Because the people who abuse children in the Epstein case, they're not being brought to justice. And, and we kind of like know who they are, but they're skating away scot-free. Mm -hmm. And the fact that this lobbying effort among gays to bring in ch children into sexual environments and sexual situations that they have no business being in, uh, this is degenerate. It's simple as that. We are just, yeah, if we were decadent before, for allowing any kind of sexual encounter to go on, except for these three exceptions, these three last barriers of you have to fancy them, they have to be on the same side of the age of consent, and they ha there had to be consent at the time of the sexual encounter. If these are the last three rules, that's decadent society. And if we are trying to break down these last three barriers, this is fucking degeneracy. Simple as that. I mean, you know, don't call it something else. We are in the degenerate phase of our civilization. And so what's to be done about it? Should we fight this shit? Well, yeah, of course we should. But, you know, looking at it strategically, big picture, you know, this is a minor fight in the overall civil war that's coming our way. Okay? Uh, yeah, and, and you, you should fight it and you should be against it. You should be against the idea of, of uh, uh, forcing people to have sex with people that they do not find sexually attractive just because if they don't have sex with them, then they're transphobic or racist or whatever, right? You should fight that and you definitely should fight the notion that adults uh, ought to be allowed to have sex with children because that's disgusting and degenerate and decadent, okay? That's pedophilia, that's wrong, okay? And, and I don't care what your name is, it's wrong. And small children do not enjoy any kind of sexual encounter because they are too young to understand what is going on, okay? It is abuse, plain and simple. And of course you should fight these efforts to normalize this degeneracy, right? But you should understand that it's a minor fight in the overall uh, civil war that's coming. Uh, a civil war that is really a, a, a battle to stop the collapse, the moral collapse of our civilization. Yeah, We have built an incredible civilization. You look out uh, from a window, any window, and you look out at the civilization that we've been built, and it is extraordinary. The technology, the inventions, the conveniences, everything that we've built, the sciences that we've created, the insights, the scientific insights that we've uh, come to because of our civilization. Yeah? 
And it's not just you know minor conveniences like the washing machine and email. It's everything. We can do so many things and communicate with so many other people, people that we would never talk to before. And th th this is this civilization is extraordinary in its achievements. But precisely because it is so extraordinary in its achievements, it's also extraordinary in its degeneracies. And, and this is one of them. You know, sorry for getting all preachy you know, and ranty <laughs> at the end of this video on this particular issue, but it's just, it, just, it just really just chaps my ass, this notion of bringing children into that which is properly adult. It chaps my ass when people's sexual, natural, and, and quite healthy and normal sexual appetites are berated for not being, you know, uh, uh, trans inclusive or some shit like that, right? It, it, it's just this degeneracy that we're seeing, I just reject it. I just reject it, and uh, yeah, I reject it viscerally. And, uh, well, okay, I don't have anything more to say in this video, but in the next video, I'm going to talk about the third uh, barrier that's being broken, the issue of consent.